The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, everyone. I'd like to welcome you back to another KevCam night class tonight. And let's get my screen sharing, maybe. <laughs> For some reason, my uh, screen share is not wanting to uh, work here. All right, there we go. All right, sorry about that, everyone. All right, so I just want to welcome everyone back to another KevCam night class tonight. Do have Greg Payton here to help out uh, with the questions or concerns or to kind of get me stumped along the way. Greg, you with us? Good evening, everybody. Finally back in the office. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> All right, so I do see uh, a couple new names in here, so I'll just go over quick housekeeping. Um, everybody is in mute, just to eliminate any background noise. And uh, if you guys do have questions, there is a questions panel there. Definitely send those over um, since these classes are dedicated for you guys. Um, send those over, uh, whatever you have for questions or concerns. And uh, Greg will read them off and we'll get them addressed for you guys right away. Um, as you can tell, as we get going along, this is a very laid back class. So uh, you'll notice Greg and I like to have fun in here. But um, hopefully you guys will uh, learn something out of it tonight. Now, uh, tonight we are going to be continuing on with our Masters of Miltern, um, going through it. And if you didn't miss uh, a previous week's video, you can come to the Solid Cam University YouTube channel. And there's a whole slew of new videos in here that Mark did a fantastic job doing of just quick little uh, videos all done in Solid Cam 2021. So you guys can kind of see the new stuff that's in there as well as um, here's where we left off the Masters of Milturn part two, uh, as well as if you guys come to the playlist here, um, you can see the introductory series for turning, introductory for milling. These are the two new uh, playlists that have that Mark has added in there for everyone. So definitely come there, check it out. Um, if you do wanna just do a couple of videos in there, you can kind of go through and cherry pick them, but uh, this is going through all the new stuff that is in 2020. 2021 for you guys. All right, with that being said, we'll stop rambling here and we'll get programming on our part. So uh, for those that were here last week uh, or two weeks ago, because we didn't have a class last week due to the fourth, um, we did everything on the main spindle. So um, everything on the main spindle is done and let's just kind of go ahead and see what we've done so far with the simulation here. So let's go ahead and simulate and we'll go ahead and do a solid verify. And we'll go ahead and play this through. Let's turn on our color. And we had something go haywire here. I wiped out something. Hang on one second here. Simulate, turning. Oops, didn't want to do a machine sim. Unfortunately, I have to let it load up here. Okay. That's uh, our boring bar. Let's wipe in this out here. So let's go back to that boring bar real quick and select. And for this particular one, I'm just going to do an insert only on this one just for right now because I could have sworn we had this good. Um, where's my insert only? Can you just remove the bar, Kevin? Oh, that's right. That's what it is. Remove. There we go. Okay. So now um, let's just verify this real quick, make sure we're good before we uh, get over to the sub here. Yep. Okay. 
So now we have everything done all the way up until this collar flange right here. So now what we need to do is we've done all the work that we can do in the main spindle. And now we're at a point where we want to transfer it from the main spindle to the sub spindle. Now, for what I'm going to show you guys tonight is this MCO is specific to Darren at ALS, but um, majority of the MCOs should be pretty similar. Um, and basically what an MCO is, is a machine control operation. And what we're going to use the MCO to do in here is to do a simple task of basically the sub spindle is going to come over. It's going to lock onto the part. The main spindle is going to unlock. It's going to do a bar pull of so far that we tell it, and then it's going to cut it off. And then it's the sub spindle is going to go over to back to its home position. And then we're going to start machining on that side. So now, Kevin, mm -hmm. uh, we do have a comment in here uh, saying that the holes on the main spindle are tapped. Guess on those front face holes. Oh, well. These ones right here. All right, Darren, let's get your tapped holes in there. All right, so we're spot drilling. That's drilling. And what I'll do here is just make a copy. Oops, save and copy. And we'll go ahead and find a tap in here, which is going to be. Go to our solid works yeah. real quick. Darren doesn't want you taking any shortcuts. Yeah, I figure I'll uh, get some remark from him. 6:32. So we'll go ahead and add a tap in here, and okay. And oops. You know what a, a 632 tap is right off hand, Greg? Uh it's gonna be around like one twenty five, I thought. I don't know exactly what it is. I'm getting an alarm. Pitch cannot be greater. Uh, number six is 138. Number six. Tool number six? Where do you? Oh, no, the six and the 632. The diameter is point or uh, point 0.138 inches. That's the uh, nominal thread diameter. Why am I not getting uh, your pitch is point zero three one two five. You're doing TPI. There we go. It's been a long day. All right, and then we'll make that point three eight. All right. So now we got our tap in there. Levels. Uh, drill depth is here. And, or I'm sorry, our drill depth is going to be down inside here, which is our 375. We'll do our tapping. And this one does not have uh, peck tapping, so we won't be using that. And we will uncheck the reverse. Save and calculate. And let's go ahead and do our solid verify here. And you can see that we're going in there, tapping our holes now. With having that nice chamfer uh, already pre-positioned there for us. So, okay. So let's get over to that sub spindle now. 
what I'm going to be doing is, so I finished off all my milling and turning on the main spindle. Now I want to hand, hand it off. So what the MCO is right here. Now, all the MCOs that are here have been added by your post processor developer. So like if Greg was to generate this post, he would put whatever that you guys would want in there. Um, so we can see we got a part cutoff, we have a sub bar pull, chip conveyor, parts catcher, uh, parts catcher retract, sub spindle coolant on, to kind of wash everything off in there and stuff like that. So what we're gonna be doing is a part cutoff. Now, it's not just a simple as coming in here, telling it an MCO of a part cutoff, and that's it. So basically what's happening here is, um, let me show the machine preview. So here's our machine. And essentially what is gonna be happening is it's going to wrap it up to five inches from the part. So if I actually click right where my mouse cursor is, you'll see the sub spindle move up. So now you see the sub spindle moved within five inches, okay? Now we're gonna feed onto that part by one inch. So from the coordinate system up front right here, over one inch is where we're gonna be grabbing onto that workpiece using a feed rate of 25. So now if I move closer here, it's getting pre-positioned for the, the one inch. We got our uh, feed rate there and then the bar to pull. So um, basically what is gonna be doing here is how far out do we want it to pull out? So our part, let me kind of move this out of the way here. Our part length is 4.35. So if we did a bar pull of 4.35 plus, um, you know, if we wanted a little bit extra, we have tons of extra here, uh, we can do that as well. Or if you plan on just leaving a slug out there, um, we could slug it off however you guys wanna do it. But we'll, we'll pretend this one is in a bar pull. So we'll come in here and our overall distance of our part is going to be uh, 3.25. So if we come over here and do our 3.25, now, if we add on another 50 thou to face off on the backside for that uh, that work ma material, we will do a three 2.6. So that's going to be our distance um, that we're going to pull out. Now, Z location of cutoff. So this Z location of cutoff is Oh, I'm sorry. Um, this is the additional distance we want to pull out. So I'll leave this at 1.1. The, the Z cutoff location is our Z direction this way. So that's where I would put my 3.26, which is going to leave me uh, 10 thou on the backside to face off. Okay. Now, X diameter, where are we going to start cutting? So our diameter, our radius is 1.375. So if we take that 1.375 times two, of course, 1.375 times two. So we're gonna be at the 2.75. And we just wanna have a little bit of a clearance there, so we can do a 2.76. So we go 2.76 here, and that's gonna where it's gonna cut off. So from this zero location to the end of our part, plus a little bit extra there, is what this number is gonna come to. Now, X diameter cutoff in the end. So basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna start up here at the 2.76 come in here all the way down to our X zero, and then it's gonna come back up. So 
if I wanted to go a little bit farther past or if I didn't want to go all the way down, maybe I just wanted to come down to right here. That's where I have the adjustment going on right there. Now my cutoff tool. My cutoff tool, I don't know right offhand what it is right now, so I'm gonna leave that one blank. Um, the inches per revolution, so basically my feed rate. So I have a three thou per rev with a spindle RPM of 300. And if I wanted to come in here and peck it out, instead of just doing a straight plunge in, um, I can have that option right there as well. If I wanna turn on my parts catch, I can do that. Um, and if I wanted to stay with my constant cutting surface, which is my G96, I can turn that on right here, as well as a torque option in there, which is a G38. And if in the parameters of this Doosan machine, we can have it alarm out after a certain amount of torque that has been put on, um, the sub spindle or the main spindle and it will automatically stop or I can turn that off and not have to worry about it at all. So as a kind of recap, we're wrapping five inches, coming an inch above the part, um, our feed rate, how much we're gonna pull, where we're gonna be cutting off at, the diameter where we start. So on the outside, working our way in, what tool number and our feed rate is basically what's happening right here. So I can save and calculate that. Now, what I'm gonna do is come over to my toolkit and I'm gonna find the, my cutoff tool here and just rename it. So that is our angle, that's for our front. There we go. So that is tool 13. So in my part cutoff, If I come down to tool 13, save and calculate, and we're done. So now that just took care of cutting off my part and transferring it from the main spindle to the sub spindle. So now that we've done that, the MCO is set. There is no need to do a setup once we've transferred it to the sub spindle, okay? It is all taken care of by the MCO. So now, if we start cutting on that sub spindle side, so let's do a facing knot. And now we're gonna switch it over to Mac 2. And we'll just grab our chain real quick. And we will do a modify, auto extend. Come on. There we go. Tool, I think this one, I'm just gonna use tool 15. Yep. So this tool 15 is a double-sided tool. We got a threading insert on the one side for the main and a um, just a OD turning tool for the sub. So levels, 100 thou, and we are facing now, this is the one that throws me off every once in a while, and it all depends on your post processor. But um, if we should be doing with a back face or a, a front face. So now the way this one has been set up is since we are working on the sub spindle, we want to do the back face. So now if we come in and simulate that. We can see that we're getting all that leftover material still on there, okay? All right, and we still have some material on there. So let's tell it we wanna do a finish pass using cutter comp. So now we're good there. So faced off the front, now I'm gonna get my OD up to size. So we're still running under Mac 2. I grab from that chamfer there all the way up to right here, this chamfer up here. Okay. 
and we can use the same tool. And we'll also go to our modify cutting condition here, auto extend to the end. Oh, actually, I need to finish that off. So I'm going to repick my geometry real quick. Grab that all the way up till there. Now, if we do our modified geometry, okay, and we'll go ahead and grab that same tool 15 here. Oops. Now, there's a comment here from uh, Darren saying that uh, for the facing operation, there shouldn't be that much material left over because he's cutting off uh, probably a lot closer to that face than yeah, whatever and, the stock is packed. Yeah, and, and when I drew this up, I didn't draw it up as if we were doing a bar pull off of it, so that's why I have so much extra material here. Late thinking in the game. Okay, so now um, we're doing OD turn, doing a roughing pass. Let's just save and calculate and see what we got here. Simulate. Turning. And of course, I forgot to uh, do my finish pass. So I'll come in here, ISO turn, using cutter comp, save and calculate. Perfect. All right. So now the only thing um, that I have left that I want to show you guys for tonight is the uh, face groove. So this part right here, we do have some face grooving in there. Now, two ways of kind of coming uh, and doing this face grooving operation. We can do it with an end mill, or we can come in there and just do a slow four axis turn on there or we can come in here with a face groove. Now this groove is uh, 84,000. So, I mean, obviously it's gonna be better done with a turning tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna use a grooving operation. And the reason why is I, I feel like I have more control over if I did a turning op versus a grooving op. So I'm gonna use the turning um, operation here and I'm gonna grab this 45 and all the way up to this 45 and get that material out of there. And I'm gonna do my auto start and end. We'll go ahead and grab our face groover. So I got that as tool number 20. Now, the tool number 20 is only, I forgot my distance, 60 thou wide. So we have a 60 thou wide insert and a 84 thou wide slot that we're gonna be cutting into. Now, we are going to be doing back trace. Okay, oops. Get this zoomed in here and we're gonna be roughing, and I'll just leave like five thou for a finish pass. ISO turn, using cutter comp, save and calculate. And let's go ahead and simulate this now. Oops, let's do turning. Okay, so we can see our face groove in there. Now, coming in here, getting it out, as well as cleaning up our 45s that we have left over right here and right here. Now, you will see that we still have some material right here left over as well. So what we can do for that is we can use the exact same tool and everything. And I'm gonna do a turning. Do 
new. I'm going to just get that corner right there. Modify cutting conditions. Now, you're going to wipe that out with the NEM mill later on anyway. I mean, is this necessary? Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Duh. Okay. We'll do it. We'll, we'll pretend that because we don't. So for, for those of you guys that are watching um, right now, Darren at ALS, good friends, and I like to pick on them. And I'm just going to do this because Darren's going to be like, well, why didn't you do it this way? So this is for you, Darren. We will go with our same tool 20 here, face. And we'll go right to technology, tell it back. And we are going to do finish only. And now, if I wasn't coming in here to mill this, great point, Greg, I can come in here and I'm not, I told it to machine the entire line. But what it's going to do is you can see it's coming right in here at a 45 and just to clean up that little bit that was left over. Okay. So you can see it's just coming to clean up that rest material. Now, sometimes this would leave us a little bit of a mark here. So if we wanted to, um, to utilize the entire geometry, all I have to do is go to my semi finish finish. And instead of rest material, I'll tell it entire geometry. And now if we go to turning, it will do a straight shot in as well as come up just a little bit and then pull straight back out. So it is following exactly to my line that I have defined right here. Okay. All right. Now let's go ahead and see what we've done with all our operations here. So we'll go ahead and do a simulate. Machine sim. Let it load up here. All right. So you can see that we're on the sub, and I'm gonna try to play this through as slow as possible for you guys. So we're doing our face turn, then we're gonna do our OD turn here. Finish, pass. Now we're starting on the OD. Doing a nice finish pass. And then coming in here and doing our face groove, as well as cleaning up that rest material that was there. So. Any questions on sub spindle turning? Nothing coming through, Greg? Um, the last comment uh, was to uh, mention tool numbers and station numbers. Um, if you want to fold that in, in I'm regards gonna, to the tools that you're using. I'm going to hold off on that one until we go through all the tooling and how I set everything up. So just hold off on that one until uh, two weeks from now is when we'll go over the tooling. But anything on the sub spindle. So, and what my plan now going forward is next week, we'll do all of our milling on the sub spindle, showing you guys how to set that up along uh, with the tooling that goes along with that. And then the week after that, we will go over the tooling and all that stuff and go from there. So, Greg, am I missing anything other than Darren uh, Wordle driving us crazy? Hey, it's more uh, <laughs> semantics of how this thing would be cut. I don't know if uh, 
when it's actually being machined, if you're boring out that center as a turning operation before you're coming in with the end mill and finishing that out, or if you're just doing it as, as a straight pocketing operation. This one, well, and um, I've thought about that. And what my plan was to do on this one is when I come in here to do a face uh, profile around here with the end mill, I'm going to use that same exact end mill and come in here and plunge this out. So that's when I was planning on doing it. Okay. Now, yeah, without knowing what the dimensions of that pocket are. Yeah. Sometimes if it's a larger feature, it's faster to remove really? it with the turning yep. tool than it is with the yep. milling Absolutely. tool. And if you guys want to do it that way, um, you know, I can definitely show you guys how to do it that way. Um, but, I mean, it, when it comes to machining, you know, like myself, if if I handed this part to myself and Greg and the rest of us on the team, we're all going to program it different ways. Um, just the nature of the beast, more than one way to skin a cat. So this is just kind of how I'm doing it. But if you guys do have other ideas that you would want to see in there uh, going about doing this part, definitely let me know, except for Darren. If you're Darren, then you don't get to tell me your opinion. I'm just kidding, Darren. <laughs> Uh, that being said, uh, Darren would like you to go over uh, deep hole drilling. Well, that. Well, Darren, deep hole drilling is um, not really related to here, unless you want to do it through. Darren, do you want me to do that. it deep hole drilling through this hole? Or center. All right. Okay. Because Darren wanted us to so deep hole drilling also known as multi-depth drilling and go to 2d here and we will see the multi-depth drilling okay so we will switch this over to mac 2 position one and our geometry is going to be zero zero now aren't you going to want a position uh, two dash two Yes, sorry. Add relative. Yeah, can you kind of explain that to, as you go for the people well, that are catching? Um, yes. One second here. All right. So basically, what's going on here? is before I hit the green check mark, I have selected a milling tool path to use on this lathe, okay? Or on this turning part. So what I need to do is I need to get my Z axis pointed out from the part. So it know this, the, and Greg, if I'm mess, messing this up, fill, fill me in here, but, Basically, what's happening is I need to have my Z axis pointed out so it knows that we are going to be using our sub or uh, our um, our um, live tooling to drill that hole versus having the spindle turn on and drilling that hole. Does that make sense? Yeah, essentially the directionality of the Z axis for the coordinate. And we lost Greg. Okay, so we're on Mac 2 position 2. And we will go ahead and grab our new geometry here. And all right, so that hole is a 125 drill bit. So let's find. So we have a 125 end mill that has a cutting, uh, what is our outside holder length? Uh, da, 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 one inch. And how deep is our hole here? So from here to here is two inches. So there has to be another drill bit in here. Lollipop cutter. Drill. Oh. It's an end mill. Oh, 
125 drill. There we go. Okay, got our drill. And we can see that it's facing the right direction. Levels, upper level is gonna be, well, actually upper level is gonna be here because we haven't milled that out yet. And lower level is gonna be back there. And we wanna go minus um, 20 thou to the full diameter. Now, I'm not gonna go through all the details of adding everything in here just because if I go to the university here and type in multi, oops. Multi depth, I can see so I'm, I'm not gonna go through explaining everything with the multi-depth because there is a multi-depth drilling video that uh, Craig and I did right here. But this is basically how you wanna do it. And that's one important step um, that Greg was talking about before he got, um, I don't know if you yeah, lost it. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> is you want that Z axis pointed in the direction um, so we know to use our live tooling and whatnot. So I can come in here, I can add in, you know, 50 steps in here of, all right, for the first, you know, 100 thou, I want to feed at rapid. And for my next level, you know, from here to here, maybe I want a 12. And from negative point, uh, 0.25 through the center section here, maybe I want to run this at six for a feed rate. So I can come through and customize and make my own custom drilling cycle. So if you guys look over on the right hand side right here, we're doing a rapid all the way up to um, 100 thou above the part, switching over to a feed mode from right here to here and for uh, 12 inches a minute. And then from here to here, we're moving to six inches a minute. And from here down to here is 12 inches a minute, but I can select that however I want. Now, if we're running into um, even longer drills, we can tell it that, all right, once it gets in there very deep, I wanna do a counterclockwise, um, maybe turn off my coolant, as well as have a dwell in there. Um, and then maybe I want it as it's halfway through as pulling out, I want it to turn on clockwise going, you know, maybe 100 RPM. So you guys get to decide your custom drill cycle when it comes to multi-depth drilling. Now, if you guys are looking at this multi-depth drilling and say, boy, I've never even seen that before, it is there. So it's under your solid cam two and a half D tab right here and under the multi-depth drilling. If it is grayed out, it just means that it wasn't part of your original license. And if you talk to your account manager, talk to myself, we can get that added in there for you guys too. So, um, as well as each one of these individual cycles right here. So if I'm on cycle three, maybe I want, you know, a peck for my segment three and I want a peck for my segment six. So I can set up different pecks for each one of these as well too. So there's a lot of power um, that is built into here and really to get those manufacturer specs uh, for those longer drill bits, especially on a you know a uh, eighth inch drill bit that's going in two inches deep or two and a half inches deep. So that's how it can be done. Now I'm still catching up here. Did um, you go over the uh, question in the uh, panel on whether uh, deep hole drilling only works on milling or if uh, you can use it with uh, turning operations as well? So you can use deep hole drilling on milling and turning. Um, since we are doing, well, I suppose I said that wrong. I'm sorry. So deep hole drilling is only available under the milling tab right here, but you can still use it when you're using a mill turn machine to do this part. If we were coming in here and if we went to my turning tab right here, I have drilling here but I don't have multi-depth drilling. And this drilling feature right here is our sub-spindle would be spinning versus our live tooling. So if you are wanting to do the uh, multi-depth drilling, you will have to go to your milling tab and grab that from there, as well as get your coordinate system 
so it's flipped around. So. Yeah, it means you're going to be spinning the tool. Correct. Spinning the spindle. Correct. Yep. So this tab right here, spindle is turning, or the main spindle or sub spindle is turning here, where this tab right here, it's all live tooling that would be spinning. So hopefully that makes sense for everyone. Any questions from anyone? All right, I don't see anything coming through. So like I said, um, next week, we will be covering the milling aspect of it. And what I'm gonna do before I forget about it is delete that operation. <laughs> so I don't forget about it, come back to it next week. So we'll come in here, do our face milling, as well as come in here, as well as doing our chamfer, as well as doing these uh, holes. Um, also doing these chamfers coming around here, which is, uh, if I remember correctly, it's, it's a fun one to get that chamfered, um, to basically turn your sub spindle into a fourth axis and have that tool follow along getting that chamfer on there for you guys. So that's what's coming up for next week. So I'll leave, uh, let everyone run here and any questions that come up along the way, uh, definitely send those over to me via email. Uh, Kevin.Rankle at solidcam.com. For those of you guys that are watching it on YouTube, um, my email is in the description below. So you guys can uh, send me uh, questions there as well or send me parts that you guys would like to see programmed. All right, well, that's all I have for this evening. And um, like I said, we will talk to you guys next week when we get into the milk or um, live tooling for the sub spindle. All right, everyone, have a good rest of your night.